Welcome back everybody. We're gonna do another derivation which is finding the derivative of the cross product. So again, we're gonna go through mathematical derivations right now. You don't necessarily need to watch this video. If you could accept the fact that d dt of a cross b is simply the derivative of a cross b plus a cross the derivative of b. If you can accept that, then you don't have to watch this video. But if you want to see the proof of this and see why this is true, then watch this video. And again, this is going to be useful later on when we derive the concept of velocity for rigid bodies. So the very first thing we're going to do is going to define A and B. So A is going to live in three dimensions, so what we're going to say is that A is simply A1 in the I direction plus A2 in the J direction plus A3 in the k direction. And I'm going to define b in a very similar way. So since we're looking at the cross product between a and b, that's what we're going to do first. We're going to actually compute the cross product and then do the derivative of what we get at the end. So the first thing we're going to do is find the cross product of a and b. So that's going to be the 3 by 3 determinant of this. And if we apply the rules of a cross product, if you're unfamiliar with the cross product, I made a video about it in my statics playlist, so be sure to check that out. So all I'm going to do is compute the cross product for these two vectors. So when you do a cross b, this is the vector that you get. So we're going to take the derivative of this cross product, so we're going to say d dt. It could be any other variable, but we're going to say with time. And we're going to say this is going to be d dt, and this is going to be d dt and d dt. So we're simply going to take the derivative of each component separately. So if the first thing we're going to look at is the i component. So I'm going to split this up so it's a little bit easier to see. So the i component is the first thing we're going to look at, the derivative of the i component. So when we take the derivative of this part, we have to do the product rule twice. I'm going to denote that the derivative of some value with respect to time is going to be denoted as a dot. So this is just simply the derivative of a with respect to time, and I'm going to say that's going to equal a dot. Again, this doesn't have to be in terms of time. I'm just using time for this example. This could be a derivative with respect to any other variable. But I chose time since it's relevant to dynamics. So when we take the derivative of this, we're going to get a2 dot times b3 plus a2 b3 dot. And then we're going to take the derivative of this guy. So we're going to get negative a3 dot b2 minus a3 b2 dot. So the next thing I'm going to do is actually group these together so that we get the derivatives of a on one side and the derivatives of b on the other side. So I'm going to say a2 dot b3 minus a3 dot b2. And I, I forgot to say this earlier, but this is all in the i direction. So I'm going to split these up and say this is all in the i direction, plus this other component, which is going to be a2 b3 dot minus a3 b2 dot. And that's also in the i direction. So again, I just distributed the i component to each portion of the vectors. Again, if you add these two together, since they live in the i direction, it's simply going to be this. I just decided to split this up because we're going to notice a pattern later on. So now we're going to take the derivative of the j component. So that's going to be a3 dot b1 plus a3 b1 dot minus a1 dot b3 minus a1 b3 dot. And this is going to be in the j direction. So again, I'm going to split this up the same way as we did before. The derivatives of a on one side and the derivatives of b on the other side. Lastly, we're going to take the derivative of the k component. So that's going to be a1 dot b2 plus a1 b2 dot minus a2 dot b1 minus a2 b1 dot. And as before, I'm going to group them in a similar fashion. So you may be asking, why did I group them in this fashion? The simple reason is because we're going to notice that this actually creates a cross product of the derivative of a and the regular vector b, and this is going to create a cross product between a and the derivative of b. So I'm saying I'm going to split this in half, and we're going to look at this vector right here, and then this vector right here, by adding those different components together. So if we put these terms together, this is what we're going to get. 
And if you look at this equation or this vector very closely, this looks very similar that was made by the cross product up here. So the only difference is that these values are not with respect to time. Or in other words, these a values don't have the derivative in them. So what we can say is that this is simply the derivative of a cross with b, since b doesn't have any derivatives with them. So now I'm gonna group these terms together, these various components that we split up earlier, and I'm gonna add those together like we did before. So this is going to be, and again, this is just the cross product between a and the derivative of b. So we could say that this is equal to a cross db dt. So our main goal is to find the derivative of a cross b. And that actually equals the sum of these two vectors right here. So we could say that equals a dot cross b plus a cross b dot. Or in other notations, it equals this. So that is the proof that the derivative of the cross product is the derivative of the first vector cross b, or cross the second vector, plus the first vector cross the derivative of the second vector. So you could assume that, you know, if this is the cross product, you just perform the product rule with it. So this is actually very similar to the product rule in calculus. So it seems intuitive, but the derivation is not very intuitive. And that's because the derivation could have ended up in any other fashion because we're dealing with vectors. So that's all I got to say about this topic. Again, this is not really dynamics related. It's just a mathematical proof that we're going to use later on to derive dynamics equations. So hopefully that helped you and I'll see you in the next video.